NCDOT is temporarily opening closed roads for the holiday season. Richmond Community College partners with UNC Wilmington and a grant is donated for the Lumber River Conservancy. Matt Harrelson here at Henson Lake where the brand new disc golf course has been completed. All the baskets are up, all of the signage is up, so we're going to take a quick preview and take a quick look at the course. Richmond County's nightly news starts right now. J. Bell Elementary first graders who stopped by the Richmond Observer on Friday. Live at 5 anchor Matt Harrelson and executive producer Russell Parker got to show and tell the kids how the RO and the nightly news show operates with its camera and green screen. Be sure to check out Live at 5 for the rest of the holiday season as they will be our honorary anchors to start the show. With a busy Christmas and New Year holiday travel week being predicted, the NC Department of Transportation is suspending most road and lane closures on interstates and routes across the state from December 21st on Friday to Wednesday, January 2nd. There will be some exceptions where construction conditions make it unsafe to open all lanes, such as where a bridge is being replaced or lanes are being constructed or rebuilt. To help make these trips safer and cut back on distracted driving, the NCDOT and GEICO are teaming up to provide safe phone zones throughout the holiday and into 2019. While GEICO sponsors the initiative, the NCDOT has designed all 58 rest areas across the state as safe phone zones to encourage drivers to take advantage of their use. These facilities are located along major highways, so accessing them is easy to allow drivers to get out of traffic and safely use their smartphones and tablets to access information or to even send text messages. The highway rest areas not only serve as a place to rest and rejuvenate, but also to use cell phones as texting and driving is against the law in North Carolina. The NCDOT offered a few tips to help guide drivers this holiday season, such as leaving early to get ahead Head start and traveling at non-peak hours if possible. Use alternate routes if possible to avoid traffic congestion and allow extra time for your trip regardless of the route that you choose. Richmond Community College and the University of North Carolina Wilmington have partnered on a new program to enhance student success by assisting current Richmond CC students with their enrollment into UNCW. The Pathway to Excellence program provides any qualifying Richmond CC student completing an Associate of Arts, Associate of Science, or an Associate of Engineering degree guaranteed admission to UNCW. To further assist student transition, UNCW will host an open house event for Richmond CC students to visit UNCW's campus and learn more about the Wilmington community. Richmond CC students who want to attend UNCW will also have the opportunity to apply through a spring event on Richmond CC's campus where application fees will be waived as a part of the Pathway to Excellence program. The waiver saves the student $80. A $100,000 grant from the Duke Energy Foundation will allow the Lumber River Conservancy and its partners in the UNC Pembroke Biology Department to study the effects of agricultural runoff, drought, and recent hurricanes on the river's overall health. The results will help the LRC make decisions to protect the river and improve its water quality. The Conservancy played an instrumental role in the development of the Lumber River State Park and has protected more than 4,000 acres of land that adjoin the river in Scotland, Robeson, Hoke, and Columbus counties. Dr. Joseph White, Executive Director of the LRC and lecturer in the UNCP Biology Department, said grant funds will support research that will be crucial to understand the river's delicate ecosystem. Results from the study, which will be completed in 2020, will be published in scientific journals and shared with policymakers to guide efforts to preserve the river. When we return, Kelsey Rushing will be bringing you your Live at Five weather report. Plus, Matt Harrelson is on the scene at Henson Lake.
There is new signage up. All of the baskets are up as well. So we're going to take a quick preview on the other side of the break and give you a first time look at the brand new course that's coming up right after this break. Hi, this is Christina with Richmond County Hospice. I'm with Julie and Holly, and we're here to talk about how wonderful Hayden Construction was during our recent pipe bursting and flooding in our building. In 10 to 15 minutes, they were here, and they were already starting to work, vacuuming up the water, trying to figure out where all the damage was, what all they needed to do. They were so quick to get on the scene. They were here before I even arrived, and it was just reassuring to have them come in and take control. We are so thankful that they were here to help us that day. Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts is all about rustic home decor and gifts. You will always find a variety of unique antiques, vintage, and new items in our shop. Come and see our selection of housewarming, new baby, and wedding gifts. For the man in your life, we have many collectibles, boker knives, and leather. And ladies love the jewelry, purses, candles, hats, and t-shirts. We also offer a 30-day layaway program. Come and experience shopping at Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts. At Kyocera, we see your company differently. We see your documents, how they're accessed, what it takes to keep them secure, and how well your workflow is flowing. Kyocera helps your entire document infrastructure run more efficiently, securely, and cost-effectively. And what we see is an opportunity to integrate all of it. Today's live five weather report is brought to you by Exit Realty and going straight in for temperatures for tomorrow with Fayetteville. It's going to be at 62 with a low of 61, so it won't be getting too much colder on that day. Lumberton will have a high of 65 and a low of 60, and then go on to areas like Rayford with a high of 62 and a low of 61. Then we have Larberg 63 with a low of 60, Bennettsville 64 with a low of 59, the only low so far in the 50s. And then we have Southern Pines, high of 62, low of 60. Ellerby, high 63, low of 60. And then Rockingham is actually going to have 62 and then a high 61. Same as Fayetteville, so it's only going to drop up like one point. And then we have Wade's Row, which is the only other one that drops down to 50 that evening with a high of 60 and a low of 57. So, but as you can see, it's going to be raining a lot tomorrow. As I said, 100% chance of rain, high of 63, low of 59. And then, of course, Friday we'll have a 60% chance of rain with a high of 59 and a low of 42. So it's going to get a little bit colder starting Friday. And then Saturday will actually be sunny with a high of 53, but a low of 30. So if you're going to plan out going outside, any kind of outdoor activity that evening, dress up a little bit warm. But uh, Sunday was also be sunny, a sunny Sunday as always. Well, not as always, but with a high of 57 and a low of 40. And then we have Monday, Monday also sunny with a high of 58 and a low of 38. So it's actually going to be pretty cold, but not too cold. It's not going to be a white Christmas, but it will be a wet one. So keep that in mind. But that's going to do it for your live five weather report. And let's send it back over to Sierra McQueen. Thanks, Kelsey. Matt Harrelson is on the scene hanging out over at Henson Lake in Rockingham. Matt, what do you have for us? All right, we are here at the first hole out here at the Henson Lake Disc Golf Course. Now I do want to mention this is one of the new signs that have been put up on each of the 18 holes. So for instance, this first hole is probably the shortest one out here. It's a par three, it's only 130 feet. And it's kind of difficult to see, but the basket is just to the right of this fairway here. You can see the top of the basket just peeking out there, that, uh, that yellow cylinder uh, down there at the end of the fairway. Now. Myself, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I've been playing disc golf now for about uh, almost a decade now, believe it or not. So I've actually accumulated quite a bit of discs. Now I do want to recommend, if you're out here for the first time, you probably want to get what is known as a starter kit. That consists of your three basic discs. You're going to have your driver disc, 
your uh, mid-range disc and your putter disc. So it's very similar to regular golf, if you will, in that aspect, in that you need several different discs. They all do different things and fly different ways. So for instance, uh, this is a short hole, but just a couple of my drivers here, and they all have different names, different shapes, different uh, flight patterns. This one's called the Champion Beast. This is this uh, multicolor one here. This is what's called a distance driver. And there's different numbers that are on the bottom of, of each of these. And what they represent is the distance, uh, which way it'll fly, whether it be left or right, if it's got any lift to it, uh, how straight it will fly. So as I mentioned, they all do different things. Now this one here is called a Champion Panther. That is one of the mid-range putter or uh, uh, discs that I was talking about. And then finally you have your putter disc. This one, for instance, is called a Champion AVR, and this is a putter slash approach disc. So as I mentioned, they all do different things. Of course, the putter one, you want to make sure to use right around the basket. But since this is a shorter course here, we thought we would give, a, uh, give it a try here. Now, this is probably going to be absolutely terrible. I haven't played in a while, but we're going to give it a go. I'm going to hand this off to Russell. You have to make sure to stay in the tee box as well. That's part of uh, playing disc golf. Just like in regular golf, you want to tee off from the tee box. So here we go. Woo. So that did not turn at all. <laughs> Didn't do what I wanted it to do. I was hoping by throwing it overhand as opposed to backhand, which a lot of people do, I was hoping that that disc would actually curve back to the right it did not do that, however, so at this point, this means that we would grab our disc and head down there and go find the disc that's down there. And then at that point, I would take one of these putters, although <laughs> as far away as I am, I may need a mid-range in between there. But nonetheless, hopefully the, uh, the key is to get down there and get the disc in the basket with uh, at least three strokes. That would give you par. Obviously, if you got it in two strokes, that would be a birdie. One stroke over would be a bogey just like in regular golf. So again, the uh, disc golf course here out at Henson Lake is brand new. It is open now. All of the baskets are up as we uh, showed you earlier, all of the signage is up. So make sure to come out here. Uh, again, if you've never uh, enjoyed disc golf before, I guarantee you if you come out here and play it once, you'll be hooked. Uh, and also do want to mention David Stogner and the Richmond Young Professionals have done a wonderful job uh, along with the city of Rockingham in getting all of this set up. The city especially came out here, built the tee boxes, put the baskets in, uh, you know, helped clear a lot of the land, which is half of the battle when it comes to uh, brush like this. So again, thank you to them. Also want to mention, uh, David had sent me a message earlier this week saying that a potential tournament could be played out here, potentially sponsored by the Richmond Young Professionals. So of course, be on the lookout for that at the beginning of next year. So in the meantime, we're gonna send it back to Sierra at the desk. And again, come on out to Henson Lake and enjoy some disc golf. Thanks, Matt. I don't think that I'll be taking any disc golf lessons from you anytime soon, but it definitely looks like a lot of fun. I'll have to check it out sometime for myself, even though my hand-eye coordination is terrible. All right, folks, when we return, we've got your RA Sports update. It's coming up right after the break, so stay tuned. McNair Auto Sales is the place to buy your pre-owned car, truck, or van. To be the best, it takes big selection friendly staff, and great pricing. We guarantee a no-hassle buying experience and financing is available right on site. So come see us today. We're located at 1026 East Broad Avenue in Rockingham. And remember, with over 40 years of experience, you know McNair is the name you can trust. At Richmond County Hospice, we strive to provide high quality care to our patients and their families. Whether it's the incredible hospitality at the Haven House or from the comfort of your own home, you can count on hospice to be there for you. We also offer monthly grief support groups and our chaplain will be there to hold your hand in prayer. Through our amazing staff and our volunteers, hospice has made difficult times easier for our community. Call the number on your screen if you feel that you or your loved one may benefit from our services. Richmond County Hospice, peace, comfort, dignity. At Richmond Community College, we can prepare you for a high-skill, high-paying career in a variety of fields. From business to education, engineering, utilities, healthcare, criminal justice, information technology, and human services. 
At Richmond Community College, we can save you thousands of dollars on tuition through our university transfer programs that provide a seamless transition to universities and colleges throughout North Carolina. At Richmond Community College, we are always developing new courses and programs in response to the communities we serve. We offer day, evening, and online courses, and you can now complete five curriculum programs entirely online. At Richmond Community College, we believe in helping you prepare for a better life. Richmond Community College, local college, big impact. The Raider wrestling team has been hard at work on the mat over the past month since the 2018-2019 season officially started, but instead of wrestling area teams over the weekend, the Raiders took some time off and went on a field trip Sunday to NC State University to watch two of the nation's top wrestling programs battle it out. Head coach Earl Nicholson returned to his old stomping grounds with the high school team, as well as several members of this year's inaugural middle school wrestling team. Nicholson called the day an educational and entertainment trip as the high schoolers and middle schoolers preceded the wrestling contest between the number 7 Wolfpack and number 11 Nebraska Cornhuskers by taking a mini tour around campus. The Raider wrestling teams got the chance to meet some of the collegiate wrestlers while also inking autographs. The next time the Raiders hit the mat will be this Friday and Saturday at Mallard Creek High School. Over 25 teams will be competing in the EB Memorial Clash at the Creek Tournament just ahead of the holiday season. The middle school team will not be in action again until after the break as the team will travel to West Hope Middle School on January 9th for its fourth meet of the season. And now for your middle school sports report, starting with the Ellery Middle School boys and girls basketball teams who made the trek to East Hook Middle School on Monday, but both came up short to the Eagles. The Lady Wildcats opened their season last Thursday with an impressive win over Carver Middle School, but the Lady Eagles proved to be too much as Ellery fell in a closely contested ball game, 34 to 30. In the boys game, the Wildcats had a hard time containing the Eagles as Tommy Sheldon's team lost by a final score of 48 to 26. Rockingham's basketball teams were also in action for the second time this season, this time on the road at Carver. The Lady Rockets had no problem with the Lady Eagles as the girls' teams improved 2-0 on the year with a 48-34 victory. The boys' game was much closer as the Rockets overcame a 17-12 halftime deficit before falling to the Eagles in overtime 43 to 39. The next time Ellerby and Rockingham will be in action is January the 7th as both schools boys and girls teams will tip off at the Rockets home court. The girls game is scheduled for 4 p.m. followed by the boys at 5. And that's going to do it for another edition of Live at 5. Be sure to download the RO app for your mobile device and for all the latest news in Richmond County, visit richmondobserver.com. Be sure to tune in to Good Morning Sand Hills every weekday morning from 6.30 to 8.30 a.m. For Kelsey Rushing, Matt Harrelson, and the rest of the Live at Five crew, I'm Sierra McQueen. Good night, Richmond County.